Hello everyone. So in this video, I wanted to talk about uh, and show you a little bit uh, about uh, web webhooks and uh, in a way a limitation of a webhook and how to over overcome that limitation. Now, webhook is basically a, f a feature in Jira. It is there on both Jira Cloud and also on Jira Data Center where you can make a call to some other system, external system for example, on some events. Now, there are plenty of use cases and there are different things that you can do with this webhook. Maybe you have a requirement, maybe you want to send or create a Slack channel, uh, or maybe you want to integrate Jira issues with other systems and you want to ensure that uh, whenever there is an update in Jira, you send something out and that system will pick up that Jira issue and you know, look at the updated field value and then sync it with some other system. So you can of course integrate Jira with other tools directly or maybe uh, integrate Jira with some middlewares, right? Or maybe integrate Jira with some platform as a service uh, tools, right? So there are, there are so many things that you can do. Now how it works is basically you have the option to uh, click on this button, create uh, a webhook and of course you can give your webhook a name like uh, the name of the webhook and uh, by the way you can also retrieve your webhooks uh, using rest api i'll probably show you someday but uh, um, that is possible because sometimes you need to like get a list of all the webhooks that are there uh, okay so you can also uh, you know then uh, define and by the way there is a secret which you can generate and uh, if you don't really want a secret, then you can just leave it blank. Now, the main thing here is that you have these events. Now, these events uh, could be related to, uh, I mean, I'm looking at the options that are there. We we have the, uh, we have the uh, events related to sprints, which is great. Like whenever there's a new sprint created, maybe you want to trigger some thing somewhere, or maybe whenever a sprint is updated, started or closed. So these are, these are I think, good enough. And you also have issue related events, which is of obviously what we want to do. So whenever, you know, for a particular project, let us say if I have a project called uh, Android or whatever, I want to basically ensure that whenever there is a new issue created or updated, I want to send uh, a call of a book, right? And maybe whenever there is a time logged, whenever there is a comment added. So you can definitely, uh, you know, send something outside Jira. Uh, and also there are some other events related to configuration, like uh, if certain features are enabled or disabled. So it is actually quite good. The only problem I have with this feature is it is, uh, I mean, it's not really a problem, but uh, it happens a lot. So if you are maintaining Jira instance where the Jira instance is huge. Now let us say you have a project where every minute something is happening. There is an update. So this webhook will be called like thousands of times throughout the day and imagine that other tool that tool will receive something because there is an update happening somewhere in Jira and uh, that is how webhooks are supposed to work because if you select here up created or updated whenever there is a new issue created fine but whenever this, there, is, there is an update you don't really want to call a webhook maybe there's a requirement where you don't really want to call a webhook for each and every update maybe you want to only do it for a specific field so that is a problem because from the from within Jira it will not really uh, it is not, not really configurable and it is not really a good idea to make like thousands of calls where only 100 calls are needed, right? So to fix this or to basically uh, like as a workaround, what you can also do is, and that actually works really well, you can also create uh, an automation rule. So if you go to automation rule, and by the way, if you're on Jira, data center you can do that anyways using automation but i personally prefer using a script because then you have greater flexibility and you can have amazing business logic so when you create a new webhook you can select here uh, field value change let us say you want to do it only for due date right or maybe some other custom field let us say due date so maybe if there's a due date which is changing because your due date could be important like you know you want to notify someone somewhere that the date is date has shifted and uh, you can uh, basically track when this is happening maybe it is happening throughout 
for all the operations or maybe you only want to do it for rated operation up to you now when you click on next you can actually add a, a, an action where you can send a web request now on my channel i have shown you how to call how to send a web request right now you have to of course specify your uh, url and when you specify your uh, your url you can uh, also uh, pass in in your web request like some uh, maybe maybe you want to pass in the url itself the issue key right maybe that is probably enough uh, or maybe you want to pass the actual due date so you can actually do that and uh, you can of course you know because you're just making a typical rest call and uh, you can of course pass uh, some custom data maybe you want to pass your uh, your your uh, json that you can of course format here you can also have uh, maybe authentication if you need uh, here of course you can do that so you have the option and and once you do that you are basically you know just ensuring that you are making a web call it is of course you know a bit different but in a way it works because uh, and it will be actually only specific to that particular field update and when you make a web call the other tool just has to process that call somehow maybe you can just send a simple json where they can you know process the json in most cases i think uh, if you are basically from jira side you're controlling when a request is sent so if a due date is basically updated and you want and you only want to send a due date along with a shugi then that is all you need to do right and yeah that is it i thought i'll probably show you because uh, and by the way while we're on this topic if you go to my website ravisaga.in I actually have quite a lot of videos on uh, cloud automation and if you go to cloud automation you can find uh, like I think I have covered like plenty of examples I have videos on incoming webhook I have videos on uh, smart values rest api webhook response your first webhook right and I also have uh, web I think uh, using variable web request or something like that or maybe rest call call a rest api so i have plenty of videos and a lot of examples on my on my channel so just go to my jira cloud automation playlist or you can just go to this you know section here and under courses and you will find i keep all the videos on my website like i have like a repository but i also have to improve how i organize my videos here uh, under these courses but you will find almost each and everything on my on my website ravisaga.in so yeah that is all that is all i wanted to talk about in this video i hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new today thank you very much bye bye